okay good morning good morning and uh, welcome uh, start to the week monday morning so hope you're all uh, doing fine and we'll just pray and get into our session for today um would anyone like to pray or okay go ahead go ahead nina Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this week, Lord. Thank you for this new day you've given us, Lord. We submit each one of us unto your loving hands, Father God. As we teach us your prophetic word, Lord, give us revelation, Lord, to move in your prophetic and for the glory of your name, Lord. Father, we submit each one of us and our pastor unto your loving hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Okay, so we are now in the section where we are discussing the expression of the prophetic in the form of a song and we've already discussed that the prophetic is very strongly associated with music uh, it could be instrumental music the way we saw the company of prophets um, having some instruments with them or it could be singing okay um, even in the case of elisha we saw when three kings come to him he wants to prophesy and in order to stir up the prophetic spirit he asks for a musician to come and play, and then he's able to prophesy better. And this helps us recognize that even today, when we have the right kind of uh, music, okay, the prophetic anointing can flow. So this is also to say that when you have the wrong kind of music, it can, uh, it can sort of, um, how do you say, uh, 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 hinder the flow of the prophetic. So that is why uh, for worship leaders, it's very important to be sensitive, to be spirit led, prayerfully select the songs, prayerfully, like even when uh, we are leading in the songs, sense the presence of God. You know, sometimes we may feel like uh, we should continue with that song or sometimes we may feel, no, this is not the appropriate song. Maybe God is doing something else right now. Okay, we'll come to it later. Practical aspects would be that the musicians and the um, singers have to be so skilled that they can actually switch to something else. But if we are not skilled enough, it's not possible to make a switch. You, are you understanding? So these are all the practical aspects. So even if we want to be prophetic, it's so important to be skilled. Because when we are hearing from God and we are picking up something new uh, to be able to play it, to be able to sing it, maybe, um, uh, you know, we, we are not used to those, those uh, notes, but then you have to pick it up and sing it. So skill is so important uh, when we talk about the prophetic. Okay, so what I'm, uh, I was saying is the right music was helpful in the flow of the prophetic anointing. Similarly, uh, the wrong music can sort of um, stifle the flow of the prophetic anointing. Imagine the presence of God is moving. There's a, there's a healing a presence of God and words of knowledge are being called out. People are being healed. Somebody comes in and, you know, sings like an absolutely inappropriate song in the middle. Not that it will um, it will do a major damage but you understand what i'm saying right there's a flow happening and then that flow becomes somewhat hindered that's the whole point and that's why those who are in worship uh, we have to uh, become sensitive to to noticing like what is god doing how to flow with it you know is it a time to repeat the the song or is it a time to switch to another song is it a time to pause all that requires a lot of training right okay so uh, a classic example of prophetic worship is first chronicles chapter 25 verses 1 to 8 we have read this many many uh, times in different courses the tabernacle of david do you remember the one that David set up. And this tabernacle was a 24 bar 7 uh, worship. Uh, and uh, it went on for 33 years. That's what scriptures tell us. So you can imagine, isn't it? Like doing any worship. Sometimes uh, we've had um, uh, worship that has prolonged for a couple of hours in our standard one hour supernatural life, it's gone slightly beyond that or um, you know we have extended times of uh, prayer praise excuse me worship uh, on certain days and we may go up to six hours eight hours you know all night prayer all night worship um, it's not easy to get used to something like that sometimes we all struggle 
to be able to focus and pray and worship just imagine with me david and the tabernacle 33 years how how did they manage like whole day whole nights going on without stopping so um it it, it is only possible if they were uh, they were hearing from god because to be able to sing for 33 years how many songs do you need one song sheet song book will be exhausted you can't keep singing the same songs again and again right so we'll see later in the scriptures there's something called as a new song sing a new song to the lord so our god is a god who can give a new song so when we say that david uh, had prophetic worship in the tabernacle constantly new songs were being released no wonder they had something new to sing uh, and they kept going uh, god kept revealing his songs and then it just went on and on and on okay so that's how it was possible and we also see the commitment of david because scriptures tell us 288 singers and musicians uh, they were very skillful they were trained but the point is that they were also prophetic okay so it would have been exemplary to have extremely skilled musicians singers prophetic and that's the kind of worship that went on so we see this example in the bible prophetic worship even today that's what we desire to hear from god and be able to sing the way god is speaking to our hearts so when we um, consider the power of prophetic worship what what do we think can happen if we sing prophetic songs what can be the result of it yeah deliverance, deliverance okay okay huh can be yes we can make a declaration victory people get convicted through what else can we see through a prophetic song music healing can come miracles can happen the supernatural can be demonstrated we can apply uh, 1 corinthians 14:3 edification exhortation comfort even to the prophetic song because it's nothing but prophetic right it's just that we are singing it it's just that you know uh, it comes in the form of prophetic music but the impact is the same power of god is released into people's lives have you ever heard of anything like this when we sing has anything happened any such experiences what about online online batch because of music because of song yes okay if you say yes you have to explain okay nikhil has something to share go ahead uh, uh, ma'am once we had one meeting so uh, like so many new people came like some is a uh, demon possessed and some people uh, like many kind of disease problems all things so we started first uh, after preaching we finished so then we started one song in hindi that song is atma madrata so we sang that song so when we sang that song suddenly people they stand their feet and then all we sang together then what happened some people those who demon possessed they got healing deliverance those who not able to like Uh, one of the people not able to hear from ear and one of uh, like one uh, grandmother kind of one of the women so she is not able to walk so in that meeting in that song only she started walking in that song only so so many things happened so like that only yeah song? one song only we one song we keep singing keep singing atma mandrata atma mandrata okay. so so that's why uh, my pastor john uncle yeah. Yeah. So maybe he sensed in the spirit. Yeah. He just he started spirit leading me. He is going to do something very big. So just trust and keep singing. So when he started, suddenly the wonderful presence of God there we uh, experienced. Yeah. 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 Y
and people got healing also like that yeah thank you vikki thank you for sharing um that's one example uh, but i am sure that in all of our lives we have experienced maybe one particular song or a few words few lines of the song when someone was singing it uh some sense of healing or some comfort something you know presence of god like how nikhil was saying um so that is the power of being led by the spirit and being prophetic uh, especially yeah, as worship leaders anyone has experienced just by music when you heard some music you sense the presence of god or country caller huh? mm but yeah i mean i i remember uh, like from childhood days right like uh, there were experiences I, i'm not able to remember the details but definitely even just some when some music plays sometimes you just have such a sense of peace such a sense of uh, you know something that okay don't worry god is taken care that sense of assurance it may be a few notes somebody is playing that's it got it but the what's the difference difference is we can just play anything because we planned it okay that's one way of doing it the other way is to really be sensitive to the holy spirit and okay what does god what are the songs god wants me to play or uh, which order should i play it in you know what is the appropriate thing right now when uh, and also like i have um, seen like here at apc the choice of songs also because pastor gives us the theme much ahead of time so few months prior only we kind of know what are the themes okay this month we are going to talk about faith and next month we are going to talk about uh, prayer so then when the songs are somewhat connected to what the preacher is preaching that's also very helpful because it keeps your thought in the same line and you know people are able to concentrate focus believe otherwise what happens preacher is preaching something else worship team is singing something completely different and then there's a disconnect so all these things these are all small small things uh, but it's helpful to um, know it so that we can create that environment where there's a better focus uh, and a better desire or a stronger desire to hear from god so when we think about david's tabernacle i'm sure uh, they were very well trained and uh, through prophetic worship we can excuse me experience the power of god so coming to the next section here i'm on page 107 uh, it share it tells us there are four kinds of prophetic expressions in praise and worship so it is listed out for us over here first one is prophetic songs to the lord next is prophetic songs of exhortation to people this simply means when people have to be exhorted or people have to be encouraged who should we get that encouragement from from god so these songs are songs from god to his people okay so that's what it means prophetic songs of exhortation to the people then prophetic songs of declaration to demons situations people or over nation so it's a battle cry when we sing it's a battle cry because we are it's it's not so much singing to god we are just declaring and it's destroying the demonic realm so declaration songs of declaration then prophetic action accompanying one or more of the above so let's consider prophetic songs to the lord the holy spirit may stir us up to uh sing unto the lord 
and I told us, right, new song, new song. So as we look at our notes here, there are many passages written here where the psalmist says, sing to him a new song. Psalm 33, verse 3 says, sing to him a new song. Psalm 40, verse 3, right? Uh, uh, he has put a new song in my mouth. Psalm 96, verse 1. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Okay? So it doesn't mean that, okay, God is getting bored. You're singing the same song again and again. Sing something new. It's not like that. But it's more in terms of like revelation. We have a new revelation of who God is. And we are bringing that into song. So, see, worship, worship is about what? Worship is about revelation, right? When God reveals himself, we respond and we say, oh, God, you know, you're so amazing. You're so marvelous. This is incredible. Thank you. So it's a sense of awe. It's a response to God based on revelation. So even a new song is that. Here in the Hebrew, uh, they have um, given the explanation that new Hebrew is the adjective. Uh, kadash and it means uh, something that is fresh something that has not existed so when we say sing a new song it never there was no such no song before but now there is something new that god is releasing because we have a new revelation about god and uh, these songs can be sung back to the lord okay so Prophetically, we may sing something like, uh, How Great Thou Art. I'm telling old songs, but I'm just uh, giving you an idea of what are songs to the Lord, right? Uh, How Great Thou Art, or um, uh, what else? Tell me one or two songs that talk about the praises of God, or God, you're so great. God, you're so good. Yeah, so that itself is a song. Uh, then which are the songs? Huh? Yeah, you're a good, good father. You are beautiful beyond description. Bless the Lord of my soul. Okay, sort of. Yeah, it's talking about the praises of God. So we are singing back to God. Those are the songs to the Lord. So God can inspire us to have words to sing back to him. And in the Bible, of course, in the Psalms, you, we see a lot of songs. Songs by the psalmist, so, songs of David, the songs uh, um, of uh, other people like Asaf, this and that. So there are all those songs. You also notice a song of Moses. Okay, in the book of Revelation, there's something known as the song of so, um, Moses and the song of the Lamb. The song of the Lamb simply means who is the Lamb? Jesus Christ. So Jesus is singing to the Father. Is that possible? Jesus is singing to the Father. Yes or no? Not sure, basically. Yes. yes. So even within the Trinity, there is um, sharing, there is communication. So in the book of Hebrews, uh, Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 12, the Lord Jesus, okay, he says, I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing praise to you. To the Father, he says, Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 12, Jesus says that among the people, brethren are who? We who are born again, we are the brethren. So among the brethren, I am going to sing praise to you, which is the Father. So yes, even Jesus sings to the Father. Okay, so you can think about that. So Jesus also sings to the Father, praises the Father. Uh, there is no such specification. And see, though we don't read of the interactions between the Trinity, I think they're interacting, no? They're communicating constantly. So my assumption is at all times. At all times. Yeah, so... Songs to the Lord. There are songs which we can sing to the Lord, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Now, there is another category of songs. These are songs of exhortation. 
or encouragement right encouragement to the people um where do these songs come from they come from the spirit of god they can come within us when we look at the book of ephesians uh, remember paul encouraged the believers don't be drunk with wine but be filled with the holy spirit and when we are filled with the holy spirit what happens he says speaking to one another in psalms hymns spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the lord giving thanks always for all things to god the father in the name of our lord jesus christ so when we are filled with the spirit the uh, worship is bubbling in our hearts okay worship it, it, that's what it's saying it's saying you're um, singing hymns spiritual songs um, and you're singing and making melody in your own heart encouraging yourself and we saw earlier psalms and hymns spiritual songs sing speaking to one another meaning we are encouraging others also with song and we ourselves are being encouraged by the songs that we have in our heart so this is also something that god does having spiritual songs even in colossians 3:16 it says the same thing it says uh, singing with grace in your hearts to the lord <coughs> so can every believer express uh, their joy and their worship to god of course and can they can they uh, encourage other believers in song they can because in according to these passages it says hymns psalms spiritual songs to one another so i mean you don't have to be so pro to do these things you can just be able to sing over someone like think about a mom right a, a mother you can sing over a baby but can be very prophetic singing the word of the lord over the child you know singing the the uh, promises of god over the child okay so psalms hymns spiritual songs singing to one another and not only to one another making melody in our own hearts singing to ourselves and that's something we can develop so spiritual songs uh, what are what are they they are songs that arise spontaneously in the heart of man under the inspiration of the holy spirit by the holy spirit um and we can let these songs flow out of us in fact there are many many uh, songs that are written that have come like this i was just listening to the i mean i like to listen to interviews of people just to know like how how is it that they are serving god in terms of ministry in terms of you know song writing so i heard one a particular worship leader indian one of the secular languages in fact uh, and he was sharing a lot and many of his songs are super hit a lot of people are singing in their churches and you know what he was saying he was saying you know in fact there are times that i have not written songs to release it or publish it or nothing it's just my own prayer times i'm just loving on the lord i'm just uh, in present in the presence of god and i'm just trying to express my own devotion to god and in those moments whatever i wrote down um at another occasion i just had the opportunity to work with people and then you know put some instrumental music to it and that way we released it and i'm so amazed to see that thousands of people are singing those songs but it just came in my quiet time so i was so thrilled to uh, hear that and it was encouraging that when our dev devotion to god right like our intimacy with christ is strong uh, the holy spirit inspires us and then we come up with certain songs right and we can actually sing that out now here encouragement to god's people one way that we have seen is that um the songs come in our hearts and then we we speak it or like we sing it to encourage others but there are songs that god himself sings to encourage the people okay uh, do we see that anywhere that god sings upon the people
correct, correct. In the book of Zephaniah. So Zephaniah 3 and verse 17, it's beautiful. The passage says, The Lord your God in your midst, the mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. With singing. So God is singing over his people. So sometimes uh, for I, I'm talking a little elaborately because I know a lot of you here into worship. So maybe at times you, you just uh, sense like releasing a blessing on God's people to say that, you know, you are victorious. My people, you are victorious. My people, you are redeemed. Something like that. It's the Lord singing over his people. You understood? So the Holy Spirit can inspire those words because it's not wrong. The Lord does sing over his people. So sometimes the Holy Spirit may want us to release it. So when we are saying, you know, my people, and then we are singing, we're singing on behalf of God. And God is giving us those words to bless the people, to encourage the people. So there is that other category of songs. First we said songs to God. We are speaking to God. Now we are speaking to the people. Either we are speaking or the Lord himself is speaking. And those are some of the songs that we um, may release. And there are a lot of such songs. Like if you sit and think about it, there are many songs in which we know that we are encouraging right, other people. Okay, let's move on. Next category. Prophetic songs of declaration over demons, situations, or nations. Uh, can you think of any such song which is like a like a declarate declaratory song? Okay, I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Anything else? Break every chain. Okay, yeah. Anything else? In recent times, we all have been singing. Breakthrough, okay. <laughs> Breakthrough, okay. Uh, anything else? It was written. Okay, uh, anyway, I mean, it's not to promote any song, but it just came to my mind. That's why. How about I raise a hallelujah? No, it's such a battle song, right? I raise a hallelujah. You're singing a song, but it's literally a battle cry, isn't it? For deliverance from demonic powers. So that is the beauty of worship. That we can sing, uh, but that is spiritual battle. Can someone quickly read Psalm 149 verses 5 to 9, please? Psalm 149, verses 5 to 9. Let the, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let them high praise, let the high praises of God be in their mouth, and a two-edged sword in their hand, to execute vengeance on the nations and the punishment on the peoples to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the written judgment. This honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. So quite uh, uh, interesting to note that the language is all like war language. You know, execute vengeance, punishment on the people, bind the kings with chains, nobles with fetters of iron, execute on them written judgment. Okay? Uh, and it says, this honor have all his saints. Meaning, we as God's people, we have this ability to release this judgment on the enemy. How do we do it? Go back to the first verse there. It says, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Okay? So, for us, it's hard to grasp how God can make singing a weapon. Singing is 
uh, it's an expression, yes. But you see, mu that's what no, music and the spirit are so connected. And the way God has designed it is, at times when we sing, we are releasing that authority, spiritual authority in battle against Satan and his demons. So he says, you can do all this, execute vengeance, punishments, bind the kings and the uh, kings with chains, nobles with fetters, execute written judgment. Do all this by be joyful in glory. Okay, And uh, sing aloud on their beds. And then it goes on, it says, <clears throat> let the high praises of God be in their mouth. So when we are praising God, when we are praising God, um, you, I like to think about it like this. We are just praising. okay. But in the spiritual realm, the enemy is being bound. Like God is doing all that work. You remember the story of Jehoshaphat? He and his people, they went to battle. What happened? They went with the uh, Ark of the Covenant. They were worshipping God, right? Uh, and when they were worshipping, God did all the work. So sort of automatically the victory came to them. And in the same way, when we are singing, when we are praising God, uh, we are doing battle with the devil. So don't ever underestimate. You know, sometimes, uh, I don't know if it's happened to you, yes. but um, I, th I think I have experienced it. When you are in a situation where you are like, I really don't know what to do. Sometimes the best thing you can do is just quietly sit down and sing. Just sing. It'll be so weird <laughs> because you have you actually have to get up and get everything done. But here you are, you're just sitting, you're just lifting up your hands, you're just singing a song. But that is a battle cry. While you're doing that, God can turn things around for you. Uh, and God can release those ideas that you're looking for. God can bring that favor. Okay? So uh, in our everyday, everyday lives, we can practice this. There are other passages also that talk about um, uh, this, this kind of um, overcoming through uh, the praises. Psalm 8 and verse 2. Can somebody please read it? Psalm 8 and verse 2. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. No worries. So, uh, some eight and verse two. Uh, can Can you come again, Anand? Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. Praises from the mouth of babes. But through the praises, what does God do? Silences the enemy. Okay? So even like it, it says babes, they're meaning uh, innocent, still very young singing the worship of the Lord, we may feel sometimes that, oh, we are like that. We don't know too much. We are so simple. But through our praises, God can silence the enemy. Okay, so sometimes that position of praising God is the position of being in the front line of battle. Uh, and uh, we must never take it lightly, like worship, praise, never take it lightly. So we talked about singing. What about music? Can music um, uh, destroy the devil or the enemy, it can. Because you remember in the book of uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16, when Saul is tormented by demon, a demon spirit, at that time they call for David. David comes, he plays his harp. And every time he plays his harp, what happens? He feels a little better. The demon sort of goes away. Okay? Same thing. Deliverance is there in prophetic music. Sometimes we underestimate that. Like how can music bring deliverance? It can. If it is like literally from the presence of God, even music can set people free. Just by hearing uh, you know, some notes, 
people can experience the mighty power of God. So that's the way music and worship, prophetic worship works. Okay, next section here. It talks about prophetic action accompanying one or more of the above. So when people are praising, when they are worshipping, uh, sometimes God expected them to also act, do something. So uh, we know in the case of Jehoshaphat, they were singing, worshipping, but they also went for battle. Isn't it? They didn't sit in their homes and worship. They went for battle. So in the same way, God may want us to do something along with the worship. Okay? Like we are worshipping and maybe God is helping us, uh, um, giving us a sense, okay, lay hands on people as you're singing or um, anything else, uh, anoint with oil as you're singing or as you're singing, uh, step out, you know, go, go to your uh, friend's house who needs you, something like that. So you keep that in your mind and you have to take action. When we take the action, then what happens? We can actually see the um, victory through that. So uh, here is the point. The point is that Whenever we think about worship, we must not consider it as a very um, ordinary thing, right? Like even in services, sometimes our attitude is that, okay, the actual part of the service is the word of God. Before that, some singing, you know, one leader, song leader will come. They will sing some few songs, some three fast songs, some three slow songs. Then slowly, when they become slow, we'll go into the word. That's it. That's our mindset. We don't see the value of those 30 to 40 minutes. But can you see the supernatural can be released even through that time of worship? Uh, but, you know, when we understand that and we work towards it, it's possible. People can, maybe even before you get into the word, all the healings, all the everything can actually take place in the presence of God during that prophetic worship. Prophetic worship. Okay. So that is the value of that. Now we have a section here on the tabernacle of David. Uh, we already know a lot of details. I'll just touch on the highlights. So when did the tabernacle of uh, David, when was it established around? 1000 BC. Okay, uh, What happened here? Uh, David, he commanded the Ark of the Covenant be brought into the city of Jerusalem. And where the Ark of the Covenant was placed, he built a tent of worship or he built a tabernacle. And there he had 288 prophetic singers, 4000 musicians. Okay, he's the king. He can do that. Like he can hire how many other people he wants from the city. And that's what he did. He uh, had so much of interest in worshipping the Lord. How could he How could he desire something like this? We know about David's life, right? He himself was a psalmist. He spent many hours worshipping the Lord. So uh, our assumption is that he was delighted in worshipping the Lord. He'd seen the value and the impact of that in his own life. And he thought, that's the right thing to do for me. A right thing to do as a king. So let's establish a tent of worship. So over there, he appointed uh, the tribe of the Levites to minister uh, before the Ark of the Covenant, okay, to keep thanking God, praising God. And then as, I, as we shared, day and night, the worship just kept going on. Um, now, what is the advantage of this? The advantage of, of this kind of worship is we see there were many victories that David got because of worship. Remember we talked about how uh, there is deliverance, there is power when we worship. So seems like David experienced that as a king. Had he not done this uh, worship, he may not have had the kind of victory that he had. Okay. Now, how can we confirm that? Uh, we, we see many other kings who continued this kind of worship, people like Jehoshaphat, Joash, Hezekiah, Josiah, uh, and there were also leaders like Ezra, Nehemiah, who continued the Davidic order of worship. Okay, And we see that they also had that kind of victory 
that David had. So it's associated. And therefore, we can say that, uh, you know, that the power of God was released because of this kind of worship. Now, how do we know that it was um, anything more to tell that it was really valuable? God spoke through the prophet Amos in Amos chapter 9. And he said that he's going to bring back this kind of worship once again. Okay, So Amos prophesied in Amos chapter 9 and said, the tabernacle of David, God will rebuild it. So that also shows us that God was very impressed. And it made an impact in God's heart only, this kind of a worship. Uh, so God wants us to keep this going. Okay. So when we think about prophetic worship, uh, what exactly, what exactly um, uh, should we be focusing on today? See, because the tabernacle of David, God said he will rebuild. Okay, so he's going to rebuild it in our days. Obviously, it doesn't mean that there will be another tent. That's not what it means. It means that kind of worship. What kind of worship? When you look at David's tabernacle, prophetic worship, continuous worship, extravagant worship. Extravagant means, uh, you know, going above and beyond. So when you have 288 best vocalists, 4,000 musicians, it's like, wow, that's it's going above and beyond. It's not, you know how sometimes we we just manage with the broken guitar and like one person just about <laughs> singing something. That's not extravagant because we are trying to adjust. But that's not how David did it. He gave the best. So these are the features of the tabernacle of David. And God is saying it will come back in a spiritual form. It's going to come back. And today, we see that there are many, many, um, uh, many testimonies we hear from churches, from uh, ministries, that uh, a lot of people are trying to move into this 24 bar 7 worship and you know praise. Uh, and uh, ministries are being established to do this also. Isn't it? So it's happening. And it will happen more and more as we go forward. So with this in mind, when it comes to uh, worship leaders, how do we train worship leaders? There, we, we must be sensitive not to just train them on uh, managing those 30 minutes, 40 minutes in the service. No, more than that, we have to train them prophetically. So if they are trained in uh, as prophetic people, and also as skilled people, skilled people, then they can navigate through prophetic worship. So worship training should involve beyond musical abilities, the prophetic sensing, hearing from God and things like that. OK, uh, so there are there's so much more in our notes. I'm just touching on the key points. So it talks about a worship leader here by the name of Chen Chenaniah. Okay, Chenaniah. And uh, when you read about him, uh, he was a leader in charge of the music and songs. Uh, but then the description here in 1 Chronicles 15, verses 16, 22, and 27, it describes that he was very skillful as a leader, very skillful, excellent in his abilities. And he was responsible to work with other musicians and singers. So then what does it tell us? Something like teamwork. You know how today we are used to rosters um, and uh, worship team, uh, lead, um, you know, lead, co-leading, leading, leading uh, instrumentalist. So they might have had a system. It was not just like one leader came and did it. It seems like there was a proper system in place. So they were quite well versed. Okay, I, I don't know if today we can even compare with them. They must have been at another level to have it going for 33 years. So these are all things we can learn from them. So today, if there are worship leaders, for them to be excellent, for them to be prophetic, 
for them to learn to work with the team, to guide the team, to pick up the right musicians on the team, right vocalists on the team, assign them how to you know, go about it, flow in harmony. A lot of work goes in to being prophetic. Okay, so, uh, and there are more examples. Asaf, the psalmist, okay, he, he was also a prophet. Many songs were written through Asaf and uh, some of the people whom he trained. Uh, so there were a lot of wonderful leaders back then. No wonder they were able to manage uh, different uh, sessions. Okay, so let me just stop here. I'll pick up in the next class. We have only about four minutes left. Uh, any any thoughts when you're hearing all this? What what is the sense that you have, or any questions? Prophetic worship. Yeah. Like regarding that prophetic music, so even like um, demon can cast out while that because of prophetic music. Okay. See, go back to that example of Saul being tormented. So demon left, no, by music. So it's possible. Singing in uh, tongues can be prophetic. I mean, it can be. Uh, but you see, when we sing in tongues, we can't... Uh, see, yeah, we can't prophesy. You're either prophesying... <coughs> Or uh, when we are talking about prophecy here, it will come under one of those categories, sing unto the Lord, uh, sing to the people, sing songs of deliverance. So <coughs> when we are singing in tongues, we could be singing to the Lord. But then it's it's not, uh, yeah, we are not able to understand it, no? It will build, build us up. It can be prophetic. Yeah, yeah. So it can be prophetic. Uh, only thing is, we need to ask for interpretation. So if I'm singing to you, I'm getting a song in tongues, then I can ask the Holy Spirit, please tell me what is it, so that I can also translate and sing it to you. Or if I'm singing it to the Lord, I can pray and ask for interpretation. Holy Spirit, impart the interpretation to my spirit. I sang songs to the Lord. What does it mean? Now maybe God will just give you that same tongue song in English or Hindi or whatever, you know, Malayalam, Telugu. Just write it down. So. Uh, we, I remember uh, one batch uh, here at the Bible College, 2019 maybe, 2019-2018. Supernatural hour. After supernatural hour, eh, there were a couple of people, they'll always come up with a song. At the end of the supernatural art, they'll have a song. There's one girl, before she graduated, she wrote 24 songs on, in, in um, supernatural art. <laughs> yeah. Not Deborah. Deborah writes poetry. Yeah, Deborah has written poetry. But there's another girl. I think she's from Punjab. And most of her songs were in Hindi. Yeah. So we, I'm, I'm just encouraging you that uh, be open. God can even give us songs in our spirit. Okay. Great. So. Yeah, correct. Isn't it? Vimal used to write, no? Francis is also written. Oh, nice. Okay, excellent. Then you should pursue it more. Pray and ask, ask God. Yeah. Oh. oh, okay. You recorded a song also. Awesome. Good. So we'll pray for more. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, we'll wrap up the class. Let's pray and close so that the next uh, person can come. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you, Lord, for uh, uh, teaching us about your spirit and being um, prophetic, Lord, in song, in worship. Father, we pray for us to receive that ability, Lord, to be able to sing 
the way you are teaching us to sing, Father. Lord, let many, many, many songs be released that honor and glorify your name. Lord, we pray for new song, new song in the name of Jesus, rising from our hearts, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So thank you. Thank you and bye.